All right, back to interval graphs. Let's explain why that first fit coloring is optimal. So suppose at some moment you use color K. The idea is that when you use color K, there will be a clique of size K in the graph. Now, if K is 1, that's obvious. But let's take a look at the case where K is more than 1. So why did I assign color K to this interval? I couldn't assign color 1. I couldn't assign color 2. I couldn't assign color 3, dot, 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 up to I couldn't assign color K minus 1. Why? Because this interval overlaps something which has color 1. It overlaps something which has color 2, etc. But I'm coloring in this direction, meaning in the order of the left endpoints. So if this guy overlaps color 1, it means there is an interval like this whose left endpoint is out here. And its right endpoint, I don't know where it is, but it goes at least past this line. Why didn't it get colored 2? Because there's somebody over here, maybe out here, that has color 2 and whose right endpoint goes past that. Same for color 3, color 4, up to color k minus 1. So somewhere there's a 3, somewhere there's a 4, somewhere there's a 5, etc., up to finally a k minus 1. And now all those intervals overlap right there. And that forms a clique of size k. So Anytime you have a family of intervals, if you color it using first fit in the order, left to right of the endpoints, the largest color you will use is the clique size. And if you take a subgraph, that's just throwing away some of the intervals. The same analysis works. So chi equals omega for any family of intervals. And the proof is just by using first fit on the order of the left endpoints.